Hey guys and welcome to my tutorial on how to make it rain using end particles in Maya and then quickly render them using Render Man to make something that looks like this. Firstly just get your scene ready, I just have two simple rocks here with multiple lights in the scene and a render cam set up ready to go. Once the scene is set up, firstly we want to switch from the modeling tab to the FX tab, so we have end particles up here. Then we want to go to create emitter, and then our emitter has been created. With the emitter created, we want to change the emitter type from omni to volume, as a volume best represents a cloud, which is what we are going for. Then we want to firstly change the rate of the particles per second to 4000. We now want to move the volume into position, so we want to just move it over our object and make sure it covers every single part of it. So let's just scale it up. Come on, there we go. Bring it out like that. Cool. Not too much. Just make sure it's covering all the objects you want the, your particles to land on. That looks about right. There we go. With the emitter in position, we now want to adjust the timeline so we have room for calculation. So just simply change this to 1000. With the emitter now in position and the timeline is set, we now want to go back to frame 1 and just hit play and let it calculate through. As we can see there are a lot of particles here so now what we want to do is go into the emitter and then click on end particle shape over here and then underneath lifespan we just want to change this from live forever to a random range i want to set this to about 20 and then i will set the range underneath lifespan random underneath it to about one this will then force the particles to range from a lifespan of 19 to 21 this will allow them to die off at random times with that set, we just want to bring it back to frame 1 and recalculate everything. As you can see, the particles start dying just underneath the geometry here. In a second, you'll just see it. This is perfect for what we need because we're going to make the particles faster anyway. To now start to get the look of rain and just get the idea of it, we can change these particles from points to streaks just underneath the shading tab and the end particle shape 1 in the attribute editor. And now we can see they are streaks looking like rain, that's looking really nice. At this point we want to get the speed of the rain correct, so what I would recommend is going into the end particle shape and going underneath dynamic properties and going into the local force and in the y axis box changing it to negative 20. I found this a good number to get the speed right, now we just want to go back to frame 1 and recalculate everything. One thing I must add, if you go into the nucleus and underneath the ground plane and just tick the box use plane, this will also force the particles to die once it hits 0, 0 in the world. Let's just have a look at the speed of the rain now. Cool, that's really looking like rain now. Now we just want the particles to collide with the rocks or any object we have in the scene, so simply select the objects then go into end cloth and hit create passive collider. You'll notice two end rigid shapes are put in the outline now and that means that it has worked. To also visualize the rain hitting the rocks, we can hit play and recalculate everything and just have a look at see how everything has turned out. And I'll just do that now. Wonderful, we can see the rain is just sliding along the rocks here and that's perfect for what we need. Let's just stop that there. Now what we want to do is when the rain particles hit the rocks, we want them to splash. So simply select the end particle one, go into your end particles, then click on particle collision event editor. Once we are in here, we want to set an event name. I'll name this splash. And then once we have that, we want to go underneath event type and tick the box emit. Then we want to emit a number of particles. We'll just put three for now. And then spread is basically how far the particles will spread out once they have been emitted. I'll go 1.8. That seems to be a good number that I have found out. And then underneath event actions, we want to tick the box original particle dies. This simply just means that the rain particle before it splashes will just die off. So there's not too many within the scene. Now we just want to click create event. And then to know it has worked, we just look to the side and now it has created an end particle too. Now we just want to recalculate again by going back to frame 1 and then hitting play. 
we can now see the particles being emitted, oh, the little spheres there from the rain hitting the rocks. And if you can't see them first up, just make sure you just click on them on the outline so they just pop up. Now, before we kill our computers, we should go into the M particle 2 in the attribute editor, and then under lifespan, change it from live forever to a random range. Set this to about 5 with a variance random of 0.5 because we don't want these particles living for too long because they're only just there for the little effect. Now what we will do is now instance an object onto these particles to make them actually look like a raindrop and also the little splash particles. Now for the instancing I have two low poly objects here that are just shade smoothed and this is what they look like unsmoothed. There we go. Try to make them as low poly as possible because these will be instanced throughout your scene thousands of times so these will be repeated over and over again. So just make them as simple as you want. Now we want to just instance these objects onto the particles. So first of all, we'll just do the raindrop. So select the raindrop and click on the end particle one. That will be the coincide particles. And then go up to end particles and click instancer. And to see this working in action, just go back up to your scene. And as you can see, all the little streaks have an object flying in front of them. That is perfect. Now we'll just do the same with the particle itself of the second one. And now we select both of them as well again. And then just click Instancer. And then now if we go back to our scene and zoom in, we can now see that the little balls are also there as well. Perfect. Onto rendering. Now, whenever you adjust something to these original objects, it will adjust it in the scene itself. So now we'll go ahead and select both of these. And then now we will go into the preset browser here by clicking this little moon looking icon here and go into liquids. And then under liquids, right click on water and import and assign to selected. Now, this will assign this material to both of these objects here. With the material now assigned, we just want to go into our render cam like so and click render and I'll be right back. With that rendered out, it's looking really nice. You can see the rain in the sky right there. It's all nice and reflective. Everything looks so nice. And then you can also see the little particles there bouncing off. And then if you also want to get this motion blur effect, all you simply do with the render man at least, you just go in the render man tab to render settings and then under features there will be a motion blur tab just um, put that down and then put it on 3d motion blur and it should be all set and then you're all good to go well that's it for the tutorial and i hope you guys enjoyed and see you guys next time bye